Chapter number eleven. And several years ago, I know I spoke similar on this spot, but I just this is just where I'm at. <clears throat> Some of you probably weren't even here, so um, but all those you have those memories that I wish that I could have. You know, wasn't that awesome with Brianna this morning, quoting the Lord God like that? And uh, so we got to talking, and and uh, uh, they said how important it was for them to have their daughter in Christian school, and the principal there was very big on having <clears throat> the children be able to give um, real life and view of what's happening. And so they were given these several books to read and uh, to know, and they could quote them, and they would be called on to quote a scripture, but they also had to be uh, asked, can you tell me what was happening here, and who was speaking, and what was, what was the scenario of everything going on? Isn't it good for us to know the Word of God and be able to just share it um, uh, in, in real life application? I just, I, I love that when the Bible becomes just fitting for right here in this moment. Praise God. And so almost 15 years ago, in a, in a place called Goma, in the Congo Republic, uh, you can YouTube it. It's pretty interesting to see and look at pictures of a volcano that was exploding and how the, in the air the volcano erupted. And uh, so the closest thing for me is I remember as a child on black and white TV seeing pictures of Mount St. Helens. I don't know if any of you remember that. Um, but but in there in, 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 in Goma, uh, in, in this uh, close to Rwanda, uh, beside uh, the Kivu Lake, uh, that was very placid. They noticed that there was changes in the water temperature, that it was a lot warmer, but they didn't give a lot of thought to it. They noticed that the wildlife was acting a bit different, but, but they didn't really give too much uh, thought to maybe why the wildlife was acting uh, this way. And so here it was that they went to bed, and uh, this uh, mountain, 1,200 foot tall, uh, during the middle of the night, uh, uh, without any type of warning, it would spew its hot lava in the air and everything as it cascaded and, 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 and just a rippling tide effect and three different areas of the mountain flowing down. Every area that the lava came in contact with literally was death. And, and they're still just rebuilding there even now, 15 years later. And so the city below Brother David, it woke up to the, the volcano erupting the middle of the night and so they go running to the lake and uh, they get on barges and, and try to find safety for themselves from the hot lava. There are some that can move and get out of the way. There are others that's unable, but, but everybody's doing their best to move as quickly as they can to get away from the volcanic eruption and the aftermath of what's happening as it is erupting. As they're running away, there was a young lady who was with child and, and, and the stress of, 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 of moving and getting away from the volcano. There along the roadside, she gave birth to a baby boy. And as she gives birth to her baby boy, she is interviewed about her little boy. She has been rocking him and nurturing him. He's five days old. And, and when she's questioned about him, she said that she can tell that his breathing is a little bit labored because uh, 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 of the volcanic ash that he is breathing in. She said, but I still sit and I sing to him and I try to bring him peace and, and comfort uh, uh, knowing that his health is pure. And so, uh, and his health is poor. And so she was asked, she, she, they asked, well, can you tell me, what did you name your baby boy? And she said, I named him Volcano. How interesting. True story. How fitting. He was named by the circumstance that was going on around about him. And so, here he is, named by the circumstance. Named by the circumstance. In Judges chapter number 11, verse number 1, the Bible says, Now Jacob 
And we know this guy because he's the fellow that made the rash vow. Amen. The Gileadite the Gilead was a mighty man of valor and was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begot Jacob. And Gilead's wife bore him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jacob, Jacob and said unto him, Ye shall not inherit in our father's house, for you are a son of a strange woman. So here he is, he's, he, he, he's the son of a harlot, he's the son of a strange woman. And Jacob fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there was gathered vain men to J Jacob and went out with him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jacob out of the land of Tob. And you can read on down, he says, uh, 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 he said, come and be our captain. And he says, well, why, God, did, did you not hate me? Expel me out of my father's house? Why are you come to me now in, in this distress? And so I, I just want to look at, at this Jacob for just a few minutes as we look at his life. And you know what? You ever think about what's in a name? Uh, some people, they, they name their names various, uh, for various reasons. Think about when we named our girls, what it means to us. We named them after, uh, you know, our, our family, Bella, after my mom, Annabelle, and, and my wife's grandmother, Rosabelle, and Grace being her maiden name, and throwing a C on that. So it had meaning to us. Uh, we think about it. Uh, Brindley being uh, uh, after her grandma's middle name, Lee, and Rose after her, other grand, uh, her grandmother, Rosabelle. You know, we get, gave all that thought. Maybe you can tell where your name came from. Uh, the, uh, really, it, in Scripture, names had great meaning. We find that Adam, his name uh, uh, being remembered from the red dirt, Eve being the mother of all living things. We think uh, uh, in the Word of God, uh, uh, Isaac, his name uh, reflects the, the laughter that his mother had at his birth. And, and that uh, even of Esau describing his appearance, Jacob, his name supplanter because he grabs his brother Hugh uh, 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 there at, at birth. And so uh, uh, you find that in Scripture sometimes names are short of God's name. Uh, names like Elisha, Elijah, Daniel, Isaiah. Uh, uh, and, and so behind each name is a story. Story, and uh, there is a meaning. When we look at Jacob, at Jacob and uh, uh, he, he's, he's born uh, as being a son of a harlot, a strange woman. And uh, when we look at, at, at his name, uh, uh, we, we find that there are oftentimes associated uh, things with the name. If I said something to you about, tell me about name in the Bible, what would you say? Let them say He's associated with it. So Jacob here, we find that, that, that he's a son of, of, of a harlot. But his name means something different. His name means this. His name means, and God will set me free. Wow. 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 I guess this is my question. This is my thought tonight. Do we allow our circumstances to rule us? Or do we realize that God has given us a name that can be greater than even what our circumstances are? Every one of us, and, and this morning as I was thinking about church and knowing different people's stories, knowing what's going on, and, and protecting the privacy of that, if, if they don't want that to be, uh, you know, uh, 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 made known to folks, uh, 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 protecting that, but, but knowing about the circumstances. And so I, I don't know who it was, if it was his mother or if it was his father. We know that sometimes those who, who birthed babies in Bible days could give names to a baby, but, but, but whatever the situation is, we know that he was given a name that was different than the name of the circumstances uh, that was given to him, that God will set me free. And so all too often we look and we let our circumstances rule us instead of understanding that we have a name that God has given us that is greater than our circumstances. Do you realize that when you look at the Bible in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse number two, you'll find Brother Eli that his, his family, 
family up to the 10th generation, Brother Justin, would not be allowed to even go into, uh, into God's holy place, into the house. They couldn't do it because their dad was born an illegitimate child and the circumstances uh, surrounding that uh, uh, cascading effect for 10 generations. How discouraging that would be. No one expected Jake to, 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 to turn out to be anything good. Sister, God, you and I were talking how important those formative years are. The more that I look, the more that I read, the more that I experience, the more that I understand that, that Brother Lynn, those early years, even before children seem to be cognizant of what's going on around about them, before we can even look back on our life and remember those times, our events and everything in our life affects us even for the the rest of our life. Things that you're not even aware of that, that happen in your home or in your, in your life uh, before you can even remember are still affecting you today. And so a sight is not the object. You know, we, 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 we usually expect to, to, to see the outcome. And, and I believe this. You know, some folks say, well, 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 can you change your IQ? I believe that with God, anything can happen. Amen. You may say, well, I'm not smart enough. I can't do this. Let me just tell you that. Let, let's, let's take a trip. And I'm, I don't want to go down a rabbit trail here. But let me just tell you something. I believe for every one of us in here, we can approve ourselves and do better. And why do I say that? Because I went to the rehab. Amen. Where folks with brain injuries so traumatic, they had to learn in just a few months. Uh, what took them years to do of how to rewalk and how to think and maybe they never wrote with their left hand or, uh, or, or their right hand and maybe they were the opposite hand but injury has left them and so they have to train their brain how to redo that we can do all things all things through Christ which strengthens us and so here's Jacob. Maybe some folks have said to him, he'll never turn out to be anything. He's nothing but trouble. He's no good. You know what, children, when they hear that all the time, they just expect that. And that's just the life that they live. But we find that Jacob was different than the circumstances he was born into. Amen. Because he knew that God would set him free. Amen. Listen to me tonight. You may still be living in stigma of you your life from years gone by. Amen. But God has given you a name that sets you free from anything that you've been attached to in the past. God delivers. Amen. 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 When He saves us, He gives us a name that sets us free. Why do we let our circumstances rule us? I think most often is we forget who we are in God. Amen. You're able to do anything. Amen. You're not attached to that. God sets you free. Amen. God can deliver us from unfavorable circumstances. So here it is that God is taking delight in the son of a harlot. You know what? Let's just face it. Back in those days, it was even worse than what it is today. Lots of things were accepted in our day and hour. It wasn't so acceptable. We, we, we seem to stigmatize people, and sometimes our bias can get us in trouble. Amen. Let's own it. Our bias can get us in trouble, and we can say, oh, they're no good. Look at that family they come from. But God, amen, He's able to deliver us from unfavorable circumstances because He was given a name that was different. Any of you ever remember in Scripture, you read about uh, 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 Hosea and he had a wife named Gomer. Amen. Gomer had two children, a boy and a girl. Uh, their name is La, La Roma and La Ama. And it means uh, 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 that word low is without. And, 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 and so the, 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 the son's name is without a people. And the daughter's name is without compassion. Amen. So their circumstances named them. Amen. But there was another man. Amen. Named Jacob. Jacob, the, his circumstances did not name him. His name was different than his circumstances. Circumstances. Amen. I believe that faith in God allows God to rule us instead of our circumstances. Amen. God is in control. Have you ever thought about this, Brother David? The 
think about this, let's just be honest. We love Christmas. We love the, 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 the mystery. And I'm not talking about Santa Claus. I'm talking about just the mystery of God coming down and dwelling among us. The wonder, the awe, the, the, just the, the, the astoundingness of everything around the birth of Jesus Christ. And so here is this young woman. She's named Mary. Amen. And she finds out she's with child. Now listen, lots of folks like to sit around and look at the calendar of the schedule and figure everything out. And so Mary starts getting a belly a little soon after she's married. It doesn't really line up. You know, uh, what's going on here? She, the, 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 something's not right. Joseph was away. But what's going on? Sure, Mary thought all that. Let's face it, she did. But she named her son a name that was better than any circumstance that anyone might have thought about. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. A name that's better than any circumstance. Amen. You know, Jacob knew something that, that his name, amen, was better than anything else he was born into. Amen. And his vindication would come and his help would come from God. Amen. God delivers people to a good place. If you look, where was Jacob dwelling? Do you know where it was? In the land of Tob. T-O-B. If you look up the meaning of that word, Tob, it means this. It means a good land. He's kicked out of his house. You're not having any of your father's inheritance. You were born illegitimate. Amen. There's no one here. He goes and he puts himself with a bunch of rogues. That's what he does. Amen. They are bad news guys, but he's living in a good land and he's doing what's right and he's believing that God is going to deliver him. Amen. And so here it is. I understand that he makes your rice vow. It's like, and we talk about that. It's crazy, but, but his vow was because he loved God. Amen. If I'm going to be crazy about something, I want folks to know that I'm crazy about God and my relationship with God. God delivers him. To a better place. <clears throat> Jacob. God will set me free. God had power. And God had plan. And God had a purpose. I wonder tonight. Who's here. That feels like you're near Jacob. Maybe your circumstances. Have been any less than anything that you've ever wanted or desired for your life. Maybe your circumstances isn't what you want. <clears throat> this isn't how I wanted to be at this point in my life. This isn't my plan. And sometimes we can allow those circumstances to take away every bit of energy, every bit of joy, every bit of gumption that we have to move on and just serve God in a free way. But God says this, you're not named by your circumstances. Amen, you're not named by them. But God has a good place for you to dwell. And you're not a victim of your circumstances. But God is a deliverer from anything that you may be. Hallelujah. God is a deliverer. That's why for the drug addict, God can deliver and God can set free for the prostitute. Let me tell you, folks, it's the oldest profession on the face of the earth. Amen. And some situations come out of that. Some folks are born into that. They would rather not be born into that. But you know what? God says, I can take that situation and I can turn it around and make it better. I deliver. Amen. You may say, I don't want to be known by the sickness or that illness. I don't want to be known by struggling financially. I don't want to be known by my family situation. I don't want to be known by the situation that takes away all my time and all my energy. God says, I give you that is a delivering name from that. You're not bound by that. But you can be delivered from it. A name that is free. I don't know who it was, Brother David, but someone spoke into Jacob's life 
that was bigger than the circumstances he was born into. Oh! Do you hear me or not? Brother Doug, someone spoke into his life bigger than the circumstances. I want to tell you something tonight, Brother Craig. Amen. We may be the one in the circumstance. Or Brother John, we might be the one who speaks people out of their circumstance. But my God would deliver you from that situation of justice. Amen. My God is able to deliver. So I don't know where you are tonight. Amen. But I want to tell you this. That God speaks a name that's greater than your circumstance. But God also puts you in a place at the right time and the right season that you speak into someone that is greater than their circumstance. Let me tell you, I think I shared this uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, no, it was last Sunday night. Amen. I shared this. That one thing that I, I've learned and I've got that has helped me, amen, in my recent studies is that when the doctors are frustrated, there's no more treatment and there's nothing of hope that can be breathed in. Hello. Oh, that is where I come in. Amen. And as, as the person that wears the God hat, amen. As the one who doesn't take care of the body as much as I take care of the soul, amen. I get the opportunity to come in and say, it may look bleak, but can I offer you this hope? Can I speak a name that's greater than your circumstance? Amen. That we have a God that's alive and life more abundantly. We have a God that takes the sting out of death. Amen. We have a God that gives you hope of everlasting life and life eternal. Amen. That is where we are as believers. We have the ability to speak a name that's greater than anyone else's circumstance. Amen. 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 Where are you at tonight? Where are you at? Amen. Are you believing that God gives you a name that's better than your circumstance? And if so, are you looking for deliverance? Sister Holly, if you'll come tonight. Are the people that God has placed around you that you have the ability to speak words that are greater than the circumstance? But David, do you know what you did this morning? You brought your daughter to the altar and said, I know your circumstances fixed your heart. And I will provide for you if I can. But I'm bringing you to the one who is bigger than your circumstance. Sister Tina, I pray for you, and I, I'm not going to imagine what that's like. I don't know. I know that it's taxing physically, emotionally, even spiritually. But you have the opportunity to love to speak something that's bigger than the circumstances. Same with you, Brother Doug. Amen with your dad. Amen. I love you. Every one of us, Sister Beth, you go to school and there's young people who struggle and maybe coming from homes that are just not the most optimal. But being able to speak that God gives you a name that's greater than your circumstances. It's for us, but it's for us to speak in the lives of others. Bella and Brindley. Bella and Brindley. Quiet. I don't know where you are tonight. I just know the word that God has laid upon my heart. God will set you free. Tonight, if it's your circumstance, Know that you don't have to be controlled by your circumstance or where you've been, but God sets free. Or if God's using you in a place of ministry to be able to rename someone who is greater than their circumstance. Amen. To breathe hope where hope seems to be lost. God has given us the ability to rise in our circumstances. And God will set you free. Would you gather in tonight knowing that we have a God who's greater than our circumstances and our life 
can we lift above the circumstances that's going on around about us? 